Hi, this is Bob from Classic Toy Trains Magazine. Uh, what you see before you is not a uh, finished layout. We are still in the early stages of building our project layout, but I wanted to take a couple of minutes to talk to you about uh, pre-planning and track. Uh, for example, uh, none of the accessories here are wired. Uh, the track is not uh, bolted down. What we've done is we've set it all up to get an idea what it's going to look like uh, before we do anything that we really can't reverse or is just a lot of trouble to reverse. Uh, part of this involved setting all of the track down uh, to see if we needed to cut any fitter sections. Water fitter sections, well, everything will go <laughs> together uh, at a, uh, in a uniform pace, connecting it all, but sometimes you just may find you need a little bit more room in one area, a little less room in another area for the best uh, fit of the uh, layout on, uh, your, ta on your train table. Uh, and right here we see an, an example of that. We had the track set up and it pretty much on the, the width of the train table went right out to the side. So uh, we had some things we ha wanted to do that having an exceptionally wide footprint was not going to be the best thing. So what we did is we created some uh, fitter sections and I'll talk to you about how to do that. This illustrates the reason that you have a gap between the rail and the edge of the table so you can put nifty accessories like the signal tower on uh, rather than have to try to improvise uh, something hanging off the side of the table. We uh, decided to use traditional Lionel tubular track as the basis of this uh, layout. Uh, the tubular track uh, for O31 or O gauge is uh, in full sections and half sections. Uh, the, the track itself, you'll find the ties have little cardboard insulators that prevents electrical current from traveling through the metal rails to the outside. Now this is important because when you start to make uh, shorter sections you will have to loosen up the uh, track plates to move the ties around. Also you may find in your travels that uh, you build yourself a layout and you find yourself this is what the track looks like when you want to mate it, so you may have to reposition the track pins. Very easy to do if you have a pair of uh, pliers. Uh, you might want to loosen up the uh, track section on the inside and then just yank it out. Uh, so these are some of the tools you might find pretty handy. A flathead uh, screwdriver, maybe a straight uh, needle nose pliers, or I find this one really handy, it's kind of a bent needle nose plier. Uh, for our project today. You're going to need a marker, uh, of course safety glasses, going to need a hacksaw, a clamp. Now this may be the most important thing. Uh, the tubular track is really great stuff but when it is new it is very difficult to get together and again this is just sort of a footnote section before we get on to making the fitter section. You may find it's very difficult to get the track sections together. You will want to wear gloves uh, to make it easier. You can force the track sections together if you have the right uh, you know, uh, supportive base or just as with removing the uh, track pins, you go to the female section of the track, crank it open just a little bit, each one of them, and this will slide right in. Now, we determined on our layout that what we needed was track sections that were two inches in length. So we measured it, two inch track sections. Now what I did is I took an old uh, piece of K-line track, uh, it was a little bit longer than the, the regular section, and this is the, the donor piece, if you will. Now it's very simple, you don't need a whole lot of exotic equipment. Uh, we used a, uh, Jim Lyles Toy Trains uh, offers a little a framework that you can stick the track in and you can uh, move it around, adjust it and trim it, uh, but you don't necessarily need anything fancy. You can use a piece of wood, scrap piece of wood, brace the uh, piece of, set of track in place and then go from there as long as you have a supportive base for it. You have your choice of using really a hacksaw or a motor tool. Uh, is one better than the other? My experience is that the motor tool tends to cut through the template track very fast but you do have the problem of uh, the blade fracturing. I don't know how many years I used them and never had a problem with that. I was at uh, our founding editor, Dick Christensen's house, helping him on his layout. 
I started to cut a track section. He said, why don't you put some eye protection on? I said, well, it's not a problem. He said, well, sometimes they break. And I'd heard that, but I'd never actually seen it. Uh, so I put some eye protection on, cut the track, no problem. About 20 minutes later, he uh, duplicated the process and the uh, blade fragmented, started flying all over the place. And he was uh, glad that he had his um, uh, safety goggles on. But uh, unless you want to invest in that, hacksaw works pretty well. What we're going to do here, we've braced down the, uh, the piece of track, piece of wood. You got the marks there. And then you just start, start cutting. And the finished uh, track section, just smooth as silk, uh, minimum uh, amount of uh, frustration. I cut right through it. You might want to take a file uh, and trim down the, uh, the edges so that if you use uh, locomotives with traction tires, they're not rolling across uh, sharp ed edges, cutting into the traction tire. Uh, the whole time it would take you to cut uh, a piece of track uh, into a fitter section, probably less than five minutes, uh, and that's if you're drinking coffee while you do it. So uh, plan ahead with your track. Don't worry about nailing everything down, screwing everything down, uh, liquid nailing everything down. Set up your track, see what fits where, and then adjust accordingly. Classic Toy Trains is the leading magazine in the O&S gauge hobby. Don't miss an issue. Start your subscription today by going to ClassicToyTrains.com slash sub.